the pennants at sea. While Jack is up on the bridge next to the helmsman, he has his chronometer out and he is keeping a watchful eye on it, ignoring everything else around him. Ah, uh, whoa, well, Jack, I've. May I sit? Of course, we are friends here. We're all friends. I noticed you haven't been quite yourself lately. Are you feeling alright? This trip is bringing back memories of my family. I'm assuming not good ones. <laughs> no. No, it is not. My parents were slaves. They were indentured service for their entire life. Thankfully, we are not going to the place that they grew up in, but Perseus was the country in which they ran from. All I hear from them for my childhood was the horrors they had to deal with living against their will. It was who they were. They couldn't break it. I didn't have any siblings. Apparently they were taken away. Eventually they were able to escape somehow. The story seems to have changed, but it's all the same anyway. Oh, I didn't want to visit this place, but, you know, needs must when the devil drives. And I take another drink. You know who had your parents captive? Before that, who knows? It's the life of a slave. You are owner to anyone who has the right bid. They did horrendous things to them. Unspeakable. They used them as practice for their magics. That sounds quite awful. Perhaps this could be an opportunity you visiting this land. An opportunity? And how? Yes. Well, your parents suffered greatly. But I'm sure they're not the only people who were slaves to these people. Perhaps if we encounter any on our travels, we could do something about it. Hmm. I raise my eyebrows. You mean as to others that we find in the same predicament? We help free them. I can't see how we could do that. Probably violence. Couldn't. I am not a man of violence, neither are you. True, true. It may depend on whatever the situation is, but we do have two companions with us who are good companions? at that part. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, yes. for this journey, so yes, you are right. We, we do have swords at our hands that if it does turn to violence, which no doubt it will. As we go into this continent, I will back you up whatever you decide. I'll stick with you. Ah, thank you, friend. It is good to know you have got my back. It's like Wojak has not had happiness for this journey, and for the first time, he has. Too many more, I say, holding up my glass. Many more. For the following few days, Wojak is in slightly better mood. He uh, is seen chatting to the crew every now and then. He sticks to himself a little bit more than usual, but 
He is seen when he is up on deck using his chronometer, talking with those who will listen whether by force or not. During the voyage, Fenric has been practicing uh, his sword play with one of the deckhands, and he, he's gotten a little bit better at it, uh, enough that he feels he could take out so a weak opponent if, he, if it came to it. I believe he also picked up a gun. I should have no Vaguely remember you having a gun. Yes, I picked up a pistol. So Fenric has also been practicing with the pistol he picked up last time. Um, and he's gotten to be a bit of a better shot. So to the point where he feels comfortable with it. The adventures have shown him that the that performing is not as helpful during a battle as other skills might be. Time passes. Eventually, as the sun crests the horizon, you can see a port, and the ship slowly pulls in and makes dock. The captain jumps off and walks down and speaks to a individual who has a large ledger, and they converse for a while. Around you is ships of a very different nature to the one that you are on. The houses look very clean and different. The heat is quite strong. And considering the heat, many of the locals are covered up. Not fully, but their robes look heavy. There is some guards with curved scimitars. But for the most part, you seem to be a thing of fascination and curiosity, but there's no actual uh, hostility that you can feel from anyone. Catalina's below deck probably cataloging um, the medicines on the ship in a small ledger. We have paid for one week's docking fees I hope that will be long enough for you to complete the assignment I hope so as well we are not entirely clear on how we are to help the friend of Baron Gustavo however hopefully it will not take too long just uh, be polite and you shouldn't have any troubles here <laughs> who do you think is not going to be polite and he glances over at Wojek and then back at Marguerite I could not really say I cannot control him hey what am I going to do I'm a merchant. She's the one who causes all the troubles. Who, me? Yes, you and the little one. Alana? No, the other witch. What have I done that is trouble? A shipwreck or two, done. we are there, really, really. 
You don't help yourself. Captain, you did not hear the last part. We will be fine. Your ship will be intact when we get back. I promise. In about that. Anyway. I do think it might be better to leave the little one on the ship. Alana? Duh. She will not be happy. But if it is best. Well, let us see how things go. I think it would also be safer for her as well as for us. This is a foreign place to all of us. Most places I go are foreign places to me. But you can at least speak the language. Well, tell Alana it was his idea and then she will not be mad at you. I will go find Catalina or Fenric. I assume they are both below. And then I suppose we shall go find the Baron's friend. Very good. And Marguerite will head down looking for uh, Fenric and Catalina. Fenric is down in the, the galley. He is creating uh, some sort of non-perishable meal that we can bring with us. Ah, uh, Fenric, are you ready to leave? Wojak has rented a camel and he is very excited about it, I think. Oh, uh, yes, yes, just give me one moment. And he, uh, he puts a garnish onto the, the food to make it look extra nice. Then packs it into a bag. All right, ready to go. Uh, have you seen Catalina? Uh, no. no? Is she missing? Uh, uh, no. I was just going to tell her we are leaving as well, and I thought you may have seen her. If not. Very well. And Marguerite will go off looking for Catalina. Who is in the infirmary? Catalina, are you... Are you ready to leave? Oh. See, just a minute. And you hear a clack clack as... Uh, it sounds like she's... Stepped down off a table. Draws the curtain sideways and she's wearing the fancy black dress the last time um, you saw her wearing that was at the um, was at the dance. Mm -hmm. And she's wearing the fancy shoes. If you have anything that needs to be carried, apparently there is a camel. And she looks down at her dress and a look of concern on her face. I do not intend to travel on a camel. The camel is not for riding, it is for carrying objects. Uh, she looks Marguerite up and down. Alright, Catalina's heading down the gangway. Yeah, Marguerite will follow. Project gets changed and then heads out. What's he getting changed into? Uh, is everyone good. fancy except Fenric and Marguerite? No. look for the name but the robes that you see in the Middle East and the ah, he's wearing up. what the locals are wearing yeah can't remember the understood name. that's fine and apart from Wojak you all really stand out but no one's staring at you like you're freaks or anything it's just you're very clearly not from there and it is a novelty for this part of although it's a trade port uh, it, at the moment, you are the only ship of your kind there, so trade with the, the mainland is not particularly common. It might not be uncommon, but it's not super common. You find her house. It is in a narrow street, and it is two stories. Not all the houses 
are two stories. Although they are two stories. Hers is actually a two story house. The ones across appear to be one story houses, but there is two stories. As one house, which is two stories, everyone else has like an apartment where there's one story as a house and the next floor is a different house. Mm. So it is clear that she has some wealth. It's not a mansion, but she has some wealth. The houses are quite bright. And most are of pastel shades. And a lot of the neighbours seem to be sitting outside on their verandas, drinking a black liquid, quite possibly tea or coffee. And the heat is quite, it's not oppressive, but it is quite strong. Like it's its definitely hotter than you've experienced and definitely drier. Well, it seems we are here. Anurk is sweating already. Well, Jack is leading the camel. Uh, he's behind you um, and he doesn't seem to be affected by the weather. Uh, Catalina will lightly tap on the door. And the door opens, and it is a woman, and she looks to be in her early 60s. She has aged quite well, and she is wearing long robes. And she looks at you with not confusion, but certainly not what she expected to see. Bonjour. How may I be of assistance? Uh, Catalina, you have the letter of introduction. Um, Catalina will smile and hand her the letter of introduction. And she takes it and opens it and reads it. And she says, ah, Roberto. And she steps out of the doorway to let you enter. And Catalina will enter first and graciously thank her. Marguerite will follow. Well, Jack ties the camel outside, making sure all the bags are closed, and follows. And Fenric is following as well, uh, squeezing his way through the door. You can see that the house is very tidy and smells of spices and has a great many books that are on shelves. They're very neat, but anywhere that there is space, there is a book. And she motions to several seats in the, what would be the living room. It's a sort of an open pan sort of living. So the, the kitchen area and the living room is sort of all one. Marguerite will sit where indicated. Very much makes himself at home, settling into it. I am a mathematician. I didn't just study for it, but I have a natural gift for it. I found a mistake in one of our nation's texts. The author is one of our most revered and popular scholars. And she places a hand on a letter that is beside her. I have received this unsigned letter. It demands that I hand over all material that is to do with this matter and to never speak of it again. If I do not comply, then they will make it known that I and my ward... Yasin Halan have had conducted ourselves in a shameful manner. The accusations are unfounded. Though our relationship has been a little strained recently. I fear this is fellow academics trying to protect their patron's reputation while trying to destroy mine. And how may we assist you in this matter? I am not entirely sure. I had spoken to Roberto through uh, letter and he had expressed that he would look into finding some capable people that's us, very capable people you are not helping our case Fenric <laughs> one possible thing is to remove the threat to my reputation Yasin he had grown frustrated and moved out 
I want to help, but he won't speak to me now. He is often at the spice market. I can offer 1,200 silver to protect the truth. So you would like us to go speak to him and say what? I am not entirely sure what has been the cause of the strain upon our relationship. It has deteriorated more recently, which ended with him leaving. Well, we can definitely ask him about it, see what he knows. So, I guess to start is uh, your ward. By the sounds of it, he may know more about it than you think. So, uh, where is the last time you know your ward was? The spice market. Well, if there is no more, I guess we should get to it. Hopefully, it should just be a simple mis un misunderstanding. I was just wondering, how did this academic uh, find out about your research? I am quite well known in my chosen field. So you have published this paper? I have not published this paper, but there have been discussions with the universities. My intention was to publish it. And when did you receive this letter? Uh, one week ago. And the only colleague you have been working with on this has been Yasin. This is correct? That is correct. He is an aspiring scientist. Did he help you with this theory at all? No. Not the actual theory. He is talented in his own way and could be quite a use to society, but he is not a natural nor a genius. I am not overly trusting of men, especially in the field of academia. The world of academia is mostly ruled by men. As it is here. A woman's view can be a threat <laughs> to man's knowledge. Things have improved to... here, but the universities are somewhat locked in the past. This is something I have seen in my own homeland. But we should get to the bottom of this. And Catalina stands and thanks her for her hospitality. Marguerite, are you coming? Oui. And Marguerite will leave as well. And Fenric and Wojak are at the bottom of the stairs in the alley. I do not know what your two buffoons were talking about, but you are wasting time. Come on, let's go. Buff. <laughs> and... Catalina bumps past you both. There is something that's bothering me. Oh, what is that? Uh, there was someone in the alley here before, but they're not here now. In the alley before we entered the house? Yes. You think they were listening? It's possible. What did they look like? I can't quite recall. They sort of blended in. They looked local. Do you think you would know them if you saw them again? Honestly, probably not. I wasn't paying too much attention when we entered. That is unfortunate. I was going to say you should keep an eye out in case... We see them again, then we would know it is more than a coincidence. Oh, I don't want to be think that we're being followed. Uh, it is a possibility. We would not be hard to follow. Ah, uh, yes, true. Where is the spice market? You said we passed it on the way? Just around the corner over there, as I'm pointing. I'll let you lead. I uh, am a bit, um... <laughs> oui. That is fine. Now, it's probably part of a larger market, but they do seem to have separated the livestock market from, like, the rest of the food sort of thing by by some degree. But you can definitely smell it as, you, as you're approaching. And it's a whole kaleidoscope of smells, you know, mixing together. And, yeah, it's not unpleasant. It's just unusual and strong. When I get there, I start asking around for Yasin Halen. So the marketplace is about 170 stalls. It is busy with a large amount of both males and females shopping for food items. Wojak 
after a certain period of time, you notice stops and starts chatting to a man for a fairly long period of time. Benrick has become sidetracked with all of the different market stalls and he's looking for spices to bring back to the ship. Marguerite was still following uh, Wojak since he said he wanted someone behind him in case someone tried to stab him. Wojak pivots and turns and turns to Marguerite. Ah, I have found Yasin Halen. No. Uh, so it appears. Yep. Uh, it turns out that he has a side job. Being a mathematician doesn't pay as much, though he sells he spices. He was not a mathematician. He seemed like one. Uh, no. Well, uh, either Unless way. I said that he did not do mathematics like air. He was involved in sciences. Oh, that would explain the spices. Hmm. Anyways, it would be an hour or so before he finishes his rounds. So we will meet him back at the ship. Wojak? Wojak! Oh! Yes, princess! Be quiet. This is important. Uh, I will try? What is it? No, do not try. Be quiet. There are people on the roof. Do not look. I almost look, but catch myself at the last minute. There are eight... On the roof. With daggers. They are looking at our friends, and some are looking around, perhaps for you and me. They have not spotted us yet? I do not think so. However, they are watching Catalina and Fenric. Much as I don't like this, I think I'll be fine. I am the only one out of everyone who looks like I'm meant to be here. Quickly, go tell them. I will be fine. I will stay right here. I am going to. I am not sure who to warn first. They are not to get there. Uh, Marguerite's going to quickly walk. She's not running, because that's very obvious. Just sort of quickly walk over to Fenric. And how much is this? Really, Fenric? that much? No, nope, I am Fenric. not going to pay Fenric that much for this. this. Now. Come ah. with me. Uh, Come with me now. Um, okay. I'll be back. Put this aside for me. And Fenric will walk with you. I don't know if that would be at a spice market. She's probably buying spices rather than medicines. Oh, this will be good for wounds. Chili powder. Hmm. She's not buying anything because Margarita's walking up next to her. Catalina. Hola, Margarita. Come ah, over, no, Dodo. No, 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 no. There are people on the roof with daggers. We have no time. And they drop down. They are dressed all in black. Only their eyes are showing. They have curved, vicious daggers. And they are dropping down one onto each of you and the remaining ones into the street. So as they, they're dropping into the street and onto people, the locals are clearly afraid and screaming, getting out of the, you know, they're starting to, to flee from the immediate area. They're definitely not uh, taking part nor do they look like they are allied uh, with them. Uh, they they seem rather fearful of the entire situation. And storekeepers are pretty much trying to take cover within their stalls because they can't just, you know, easily run away. Yeah. So for, as the uh, assassin thief ninja jumps from the roof... Um, Fenric sees him coming and, uh, grabs onto his outstretched foot. It looks like he was trying to, uh, kick him in the head or stab him in some way. Uh, but he grabs his, the assassin's foot, uh, and slams him into the ground. 
uh, for two raises. One to grab the foot, one to slam him into the ground. And he is unconscious. Marguerite is the one who first noticed them and is fairly unsurprised when they jump off the roof. She's spending one raise to quickly duck out of the way and not be jumped on. However, since she was going from more of a sort of perception-based approach, she's not attacking. She's trying to get a good sense of the situation. She's only spending one raise to get out of the way. You can see Wojak coming in from uh, the street he was waiting in. Uh, behind him are armed guards dressed in white but with golden breastplates adorning them. Catalina spins around, noticing one of the other assassins sneaking up behind Marguerite. She grabs a fistful of powder from the table that's next to her, taps the guy on the shoulder who turns around and she throws the powder in his face. And she doesn't see one of the other assassins come up who is going to stab Marguerite. He's in, uh, he's got his dagger and he's bringing it down and Catalina brings her arm up. The dagger pierces through. Yep, that's nutmeg in his eyes. I hope that tastes good in your eyelids, buddy. As he's stumbling around, clawing at his eyes, which are burning terribly from nutmeg, which I do hope your eyes burn eyes up from nutmeg? I, I don't know. They do now. <laughs> Shall we contest he's that got theory? Powder. He's got powder in his eyes. Either way, it's stinging. So he's stumbling around brushing his hands over his eyes and as he does that, Marguerite is going to stick out her leg and trip him. He's going to fall over and hit his head on the stall and fall unconscious. The first guard leans in, pulls out her scimitar and lunges at the one of the brutes, engaging in a fierce battle. The other one also brings out his scimitar and engages a second brute. Thrusts the dagger forward, falls back to the ground as she turns to see the guy behind her, or the assassin behind her that was tied up before, has now untangled himself. Ojak takes a breath as the other ga guards rush in, and with a mighty roar, he charges in. Just as he gets to one of the assassins, he stops very quickly, and the assassin turns to him, pulls up his sword, and charges, wordlessly chasing after Wojak. Wojak quickly turns around, runs the other way. Marguerite is going to turn to whichever assassin is closest to her, turn to face them, draw her rapier, and shift into a stance that you would take if you were... About to try and stab someone. Uh, the assassin is also in a aggressive stance, obviously. Um, so for a second, it looks as though they're about to engage in some sort of a duel. She's going to lunge forward with her rapier, and it goes quite wide off to the side of his head. And he is... Not very impressed, considering she's missed by such a large range, but she very quickly turns the blade to the side, whacks the hilt into the side of his head, and knocks him out. So Fenric is going to draw his sword, and he's going to stand up. Hey! Get away from my friends! Come get me, assassins! And one of them turns to look. She turns just in time to see the uh, assassin unravel himself. He lunges at her again, this time with a little bit more determination, and she uses her right arm to uh, parry his... Uh, weapon hand to the side and uh, uses her shoulder to knock him uh, around so he stumbles uh, forward. 
into the opposite post of the uh, stall, which knocks it over, bringing the canvas top down on top of him, or the edge of it at least, anyway. Okay. Um, Marguerite sees a, a cart with a lot of barrels stacked in the back of it, which have been tied together with a rope to prevent them all from rolling out. And she is going to rather decisively slice that rope so that they will all fall out. And roll, hitting the guard that is running towards Fenric, knocking him off of his feet, and a cascade of barrels will then roll down upon and over him. The two guards are down. Oh, sorry, guards. They might be unconscious. So sorry, that's not fun. And all the assassins are also now down. All right, looking around at the devastation we have caused in this marketplace. Yeah, you're very popular at the moment. There's a few eyes peering over the, the tops of their uh, benches and stuff. But for the most part, the area is quiet. But it won't remain so for long. And Catalina has you know, a cradling her left arm towards her chest, and she's taken off at a well, as fast as you can run in high heels. Marguerite will follow. After Fenric has finished calming the crowds, he goes up to Fenric and whispers in his ear, I think we should do like the others and make ourselves scarce. It's going to be very hard for us to keep a low profile, but I think we will be in a bit of trouble if we stay around here. No. Good work, hey. though, on keeping the locals placated. I think now that they are a little bit more at calm, we should get out of here. I agree. Yeah, let's just calmly walk away and hope no one says anything. Agreed. Get back to the ship. Quickly. It is not locked. Okay, she opens up the door to the captain's cabin and storms in. Marguerite's following her because she wants to know what's going on. And he's riding in a ledger and he looks up shocked and she sits down in front of them and uh, sits down in front of him and she plonks her head on the end of his table and groans so she's walking in as well and he folds the ledger close slowly and pushes it to one side And he looks up when Marguerite enters. I do not know. She was injured, but not upset. And then Wojak has said something. And then she screamed. And I went to see what was. And now Wojak is angry. And she is angry. And I am just here. Wojak makes many people want to scream. How did you get injured? Didn't you just go to a meeting? Well, there was a meeting, and then we went to try and find somebody else, and then there were assassins. You know how it is. Wait. I have never known anyone attract trouble like you have. And Catalina sits up right, looking into the... or past the... The captain and uh, possibly out the window at the the port yeah and the water maybe focusing on a boat the distance that's slowly making its way into the harbor i should have known that no job for roberto is as easy as uh with the level assassins 
Is that where A-Tub's in? I do not know your friend like you do, but... Although I'm sure he has his secrets, he does not seem the type to... It is not Roberto that has his secrets. It is these... Well, maybe they... Maybe they are just a cabal. I shall make them pay for this. Uh, the assassins, or...? And she winces a bit of pain as she... Uh, cradles her left arm. She got... line of stitches on the top. <clears throat> and her arm's basically pink and red at the same time, and blue as it's lost blood, but it's pink and red from where she's wiped the blood away and uh, where the stitches are she's stitched up there's a, just a line of black stitching I did not think that simple academics would have access to such resources it sounded as though the academics are uh power fell in their influence they are especially the one that was shown to be wrong is uh, revered very popular he has followers we I do not want make him uh, I do not want to make a martyr of this man to be a martyr he would have to be dead is he dead not yet, Marguerite. Not yet. We are strangers in a strange land. With a legal system I do not fully trust. We killed no one. I did not kill... I, I did not kill anyone. Um, the dagger accidentally went into his head. Oh, did you kill someone? I did not see. I I'm... killed no one. Je suis désolé. I did not see that one. Then we have a problem. We don't exactly blend in. It will not take the authorities long before they will be at our birth. Uh, no. Stupid of me to fall into such a trap. However, we cannot set sail. We have not finished the job we have been paid for. I have an idea. It will need to be a good one. If they want to clean this mess up, and they might, they might be more than happy to have a scapegoat. That would be us. I do not know these people. Not well. We might be able to talk a deal. We may be able to get clemency. They may side with us if we were attacked. But I cannot guarantee it. The locals in the market, unless they have some other motive to lie, they should be able to say that we were attacked. Which may well work in our favor. It is quite possible that we uh, might be dealing with uh, people who are corrupt. We do not want to rely on the local people. Then what would you say? If we run, it is an admission of guilt. Hey. And it may come back to your friend as well, if it is known that... He is why we came. I do not, do not know. I cannot think. I do not know. Perhaps they might send more, but they may have underestimated us. Clearly they felt that you were a threat. Is it better if we wait for them to come and question us about this or go and speak to them first? It is going to depend 
on the quality of the individual, I think. It is difficult to know that before. If they believe in justice, then we might still be in something of a situation, but it won't be untenable. I'm sure there is corruption here, but there is also honour. Prefer to be up front, but I don't know. It will be difficult for us to gain information. Perhaps Wojak. He has the best chance of feeling more not like an outlander. My reputation depends entirely upon honor. I shall submit myself to the authorities. If it would seem an admission of guilt to leave, surely it would also seem an admission of guilt to stay here on the ship and not address the matter? As I said, I will go to the authorities. And then I will go as well. Leaving Wojak. To do what? To do what he needs to do, what he does best, and that is to uh, seek the information through unscrupulous means uh, at present. Well, Wojak did not really uh, participate as much in the fighting, so any witnesses might not have... Uh, uh, so if we are, if we go and say, we, it was us, uh, so sorry, <laughs> what a terrible misunderstanding, um, then I suppose he can do as he needs. A Fenric, he, does he come with us or stay with Bulljack? I would, I would, um, I would suggest that Fenric stay with Bulljack. He was also fighting with us in the market, though. He may be a big man, but he can easily put on a robe. <laughs> and you cannot? They will be looking for a woman in a black dress. Very well. Then we shall go... Uh, speak to the authorities, I suppose. Uh, very well. Shall we go now? See. Si. Then we shall tell Bojack and Fenric. See. Si. Alana walks in. Oh, God. And she walks around and stands next to the decks and looks at the captain who looks at her. And she looks at the captain who looks at her. And then he gets out of his seat and she sits down. And he leans against the wall and folds his arms. And she reaches into her uh, waistcoat and pulls out a leather um, case, which she opens and is a deck of cards. And she shuffles them and puts them on the table and turns the first one over and looks at it. And she looks up and she says, There is a game. Something is being played for. Something which has great value. Catalina, who doesn't understand her. <laughs> Catalina's just looking at Marguerite, completely um, looking back at Alana, looking down at this card that Okay, looking at the tarot card going, what the heck? Uh, she is looking at your fate. Adelina's eyes widen. She looks back at Marguerite. I do not like the people looking into my personal life. It is not what you have done that she is looking into, it is what will happen now. What do you mean that will happen now? Friends, the next. 
pieces, pawns, but not not to be sacrificed without meaning, blocking, creating inconvenience. She turns another card. It is a game like a maze that you are in, but there is a way out. Alana, why do you want to look at Catalina's strands now? Because I somewhat like her. The what? You don't. You don't know what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad to hear that. But why now? You are in some trouble. We. Oui. I have very good hearing. Yeah, especially when you listen at the door. Hush. Do you have any advice then? They don't always give a direct course of action or a direction. However, there is something of value on the game board. You are pieces in that game that they're not willing to sacrifice unless they need to. Who is? That I do not know. It would not be Roberto. The maze has a way out. For Catalina? Yes. Oui. You will need to be careful. Oui. Catalina's just like hearing her name. Cause that's the same in any language. So. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. It. It did sound like that there was a lack of information. It may be oui. an idea to send Wojak. To see what he can learn. I think that is part of the plan. Do you object to the rest of it? Because right now... We don't know... Who the players are. This may or may not be... Associated with... What we were meant to be doing here. That is true. I heard Wojcik's name. What is she saying? I will tell you. I... Sorry. Yes? She's jittery. Oi. Oui. She's not normally jittery. She is angry. Ah, uh, Serto. But those that are playing the game that may have a way out, it could be a different game. But they will be ones who have influence. Oui. If it is Catalina's fate you are looking at, is she in particular danger? Should she not go? That I cannot see she is in danger and it will definitely matter what she does Ui. and when have you learned to read tarot i do not need to look at the cards to realize someone out there is very angry or very fearful someone in particular i would expect in this case Something to do with what you were actually doing. Oui. It did not take them long to launch this ambush. No. That says they are afraid or angry to me. Unless they were expecting a different ship of foreigners that is related to this other thing 
and they were reacting to that. And it was all unfortunate happenstance. But I do not trust in coincidence. I know. I would imagine that. And I learned back in Vodachi, it was one of the skills that they said I was quite good at. Say many peak. I shall have to ask you to read mine someday. Catalina. Hmm. Where to begin? What? I am trying to... Is it bad? Well, it is not good. <laughs> so, there is a game which is like a maze but you can get out it depends on what you do and what you do is important uh, there is something of value in this game and we are pawns but Ones that would not be sacrificed without due cause. Whose game it is, she does not know. And uh, Catalina looks a little bit concerned. I do not understand what you are saying. I do understand that we are all pawns in a, in a, a game in a larger picture, but uh, this maze, this game that you speak of, is this something that has come about from what has happened to us today? No, I do not. I do not think so. I think it is something. What has happened today may be connected, but it is not what has caused this, as she did say. she specified a difference between this game and what we are supposed to be doing here. So I do not think they are the same. And she picks up the three cards and puts it back on the top of the deck and closes the deck and puts it back into the bag and then back into her waistcoat. You are very interesting, you know? And she's smiles a little slyly and she goes Soto I am glad you are here she said that we do not have enough information and that it might not be a bad idea to send Wojak as you suggested her eyes open a, a little ever so slightly and with her right hand she's she sort of waves and says yes yes send the boy to do a man's job oh, fine Marguerite we shall go to the authorities come on I it might not so... be so bad what I'm is the so... worst that can happen they kill us well, I'm tired. I do not fancy sleeping in a cold cell. She stands up. Walking out yep. of the captain's cabin, she yells through the entire ship. All right, buffoon! Your turn to go and get the information. And everyone on the ship knows who she's talking to. Are you talking to me? Fenric sticks his head out of the galley. Uh, well, goodbye, Captain Alana. We will hopefully not die. And Marguerite will leave. At least I will look beautiful if I'm to hang. She looks down at her dress, all bloodied. 
You ripped your dress. My 80 silver dress. Oh my god. This is... You didn't have to wear it. This is going to take forever to repair. You're the one who decided to wear your fancy dress to this. This is a fight. <laughs> Assassins. Yeah. I mean... Jeez, they could have been a little bit more considerate. They don't wait till you're wearing what you want to be wearing for a fight. I mean, jeez. What, what's these times coming to when they're not waiting till a, oh, a woman's Oh my goodness. What's the world dressed? coming to when assassins don't let you change before they try and murder you? Mm. Hello, you are not the one that she was yelling at. I realize that, but Wojak felt, uh, insulted, I guess. Uh, he's Only still now in the does he feel insulted? It has taken this long. Anyway, we are going to we are going to go be arrested. So perhaps he could come speak to us before that. You're going to be arrested. What happened? Oh well, we may be, we may not be. Who knows? We are going to go tell them about the fight. Why? So that it does not seem as though we have anything to hide. Someone has to take responsibility. Do they? They will come to Why the ship it? eventually. If they come to the ship, it will not just be us that will be in trouble. It will be all of the crew. Well, at least change your clothes before you go to the authorities. Oh, Why? you great buffoon as well. I, they will be looking for a lady in a black dress. Yes, covered in blood. Wait, we are not hiding. We are going to go say we have done this. Okay, that's fine. I guess, if that's what you really want to do. But it's not going to help your case if you're covered in blood. That is from what we are going to go tell them has happened. It is not... They will You're come right. find I was us in the here. Kitchen. No, I mean right now. They will come find us here regardless. We? Oui? No. Oui. How oui. would they know where we are from? We are the only foreigners here right now. This is the only foreign ship. Catalina left a trail of blood back here. We are not hard to find. <laughs> I am perhaps the only person or the only lady on the whole western coast of this country wearing a black dress I she was covered the in blood lady in the whole country and I, was about to be like, I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> they will come find us that is true so we have two options we wait for them to come find us or we go and speak to them. If we wait, we look guilty. If they come here, it is not us only if you, that can if be in trouble. If you go covered in blood, you will also look guilty. They know there is blood. That is not the issue. You are not listening. We are going to go tell them that, yes, we were in the fight. And yes, Catalina is covered in blood. That is part of it. But here is what happened. If they come here, they will find us still. And it will not only be us that is in trouble, it could be anyone on this ship. Look, I know your diplomacy skills are not the best, but first impressions are I important. am well trained in diplomacy, thank you. Adelina puts her hand on Marguerite's shoulder as if to steady herself, and she puts her head on her shoulder. She starts to sway a little bit. We better go now, or just push me off the ship so I can... Uh, you should least... stay if you are truly this ill. I am not this ill. Me and Wojak will be by in a couple hours to break you out of prison. We do not know if we will be arrested. Well, we are going. Goodbye. 7C, starring Emily as Marguerite.
Shadow as Fenric, Raven Insane as Catalina, and introducing Louis as Wojak. Ghost as the teller of stories. Seventh C is released by Chaosium Games and written by John Wick. Some of the sounds come from Sirenscape.com. You can find us at Critfail.com. Damn, I knew, I knew, I knew. I was gonna say on the way on the ship that she was gonna sit down with Alana and help to help Alana to to learn Castilian and so that she can learn Thodachi. I think at this point we're going to sit down and help you with English. <laughs>